with the Louisville Free Public Library. In 2017, we launched the Collider Artist in Residence program. Liz Richter is the January 2021 Virtual Collider Artist in Residence. We are excited to welcome Liz back as she was one of our in-person artists in September 2019. She is a Louisville visual artist and muralist, and we hope you'll join her for her live program. Hi everyone, it's Liz Richter. I'm here at the South Central Regional Library, and we're in the Collider Artist in Residency space where I got to spend a residency here in the fall of 2019 as I was planning out my two designs for the Smoketown Mural Festival. So since part of that work originated in the space, I thought it might be really fun to tell you um, about the process of those two pieces, which started in the beginning of 2019 uh, and sort of spanned all the way through the end of it um, to culminate into the mural festival in Louisville or in the Smoketown neighborhood, the first mural festival in Louisville. Uh, so for, these, for this project, I started out with a really nice wall and um, too many ideas, which, which happens a lot with me. And one of the reasons I really love doing public art and working with feedback from the public is that they can help me narrow down that focus and um, really get at the core of what a community wants to see. And what I found is anytime I do this sort of collaborative design process where I'm bringing in, um, you know, stakeholders and community members and getting feedback from them, the work is always better. So I wanted to show you all this, these two projects and how they evolved because they're a really good example of the creative process and how collaboration and then also just time and um, spatial elements can change a project and, and make it different than what you thought it would be, but sometimes better. And I think this is definitely an example of that. So the Smoketown Mural Art Festival was um, a project that I was applied to along with like many other artists regionally, locally, and even internationally. And I was chosen as one of 15 artists um, by a committee. Um, and some of the artists were, there was an international artist, there was a couple like nationally known artists who were involved. And then I think it was around 10 local muralists who had the opportunity to work on a wall. I was one of two women, so I naturally felt a lot of pressure there to just like represent the feminine perspective um, in the piece that I did. So the original design that I um, came up with, I studied the Smoketown neighborhood plan in depth. And just a little bit of background about the Smoketown neighborhood in case you're not as familiar. It's one of the oldest neighborhoods in Louisville. It's, uh, it has a very deep African-American history that predates the Civil War even. And it was a haven for um, slaves as they were trying to escape the South during the Civil War and the post-Civil War era. The neighborhood has that really deep, strong history of both like sort of a German settlement originally, and then um, an African-American presence in the neighborhood. And it's known over the past like, you know, over 150 years now for being a really diverse place that takes care of itself, that has this um, rich history that's, um, it's, it's, it's layered. I started thinking about the idea of a crazy quilt to represent that because a crazy quilt is sort of improvisational. It's not put together the same way a traditional quilt is in the sense that you're using anything that you can find. Um, you're using, it's a very resourceful way of making a quilt, but also a quilt, the general concept of a quilt is very Kentuckian um, and it, it personally resonated with me because I'm, my hometown is Paducah, Kentucky, which is the quilting capital of, I guess, the world, I don't know. Um, and so I felt, I, I felt like the idea of a quilt was a way of representing that sort of shared heritage that all Smoketown residents might have despite their uh, demographics or race or social economic status. So um, the Smoketown neighborhood is also one of the poorer neighborhoods in Louisville. And, and it's gone through a lot of tough history in the sense of um, now there's some revitalization happening, but there's also been issues with redlining. And as I was reading the history of, of the Smoketown neighborhood, I realized that there's a lot of content there that I wanted to um, 
give homage to without speaking out of turn because I'm not from that neighborhood myself, but I wanted to recognize and acknowledge like those struggles. So I came up with this idea of doing some sort of crazy quilt, abstract design that incorporated quilt patterns. And I ended up incorporating quilt patterns that um, were from the Civil War era and that specifically referenced Lincoln, like the, there's a Lincoln log pattern. Um, and then there's another one called Flying Geese that's triangles that are pointing upward to the sky. And it has a lot of symbolism behind it about like fleeing to um, safety or to freedom. And then it also is just, um, I've, I've read stories about how the original quilt design was talking about just like generally uplifting or the idea of like being able to escape. So all of these ideas were sort of culminating in my mind. At the same time, um, I was hearing conversations about women and children in the Smoketown neighborhood and realizing how important the neighborhood, the way that they take care of themselves was. And so I wanted to sort of symbolize the idea of all these awesome nonprofits that exist in the Smoketown neighborhood and the way they care for the population there who's living under the poverty line which is a really large population, and popula the population of Smoketown has a very high number of children, especially under even like age five. I think it was 13%. Something like that of the population in Smoketown is under the age of five, and a lot of those are living in the poverty, under the poverty line. So I wanted to talk about families. And so I came up with this idea of showing a mother feeding her child with her body and um, using that as a symbol for the Smoketown neighborhood in the way that the community cares for its, its own and cares for its children. And that's where that idea came from. And so the image for that came from a series of photography from the Huffington Post of uh, black women breastfeeding their children. And one of those I just fell in love with. And what's really cool about this image is I actually sent the finished painting or the finished mural to this woman in the photograph and she loved it and I sent her some stickers and some prints and stuff of it and um, and she was just so excited to see her and her daughter represented you know large scale in in this way which that made me really happy that she loved it as well um, so the the image started out as uh, a, a sort of an illustration that I drew of the mother and child and then I had all these different versions of like abstract geometric designs and I was playing with those in Photoshop and laying them on top of the building and trying to figure out you know how I would want them to look and um, throughout the process the way it kind of works is once you're assigned a wall then that's when you really start thinking compositionally in terms of like how is this going to look on this particular wall and how am I pulling this off Who's getting, who's getting all the way up there to do this? Um, and so when we got to that point where we were looking at the logistics of the wall, um, we came across some issues with power lines that caused me to have to completely redesign um, the concept. So this was about two or three versions in. I think total we ended up about four or five different versions of this that I, that I sketched out and drew. Uh, so basically, the power lines kept us from being able to go more than 15 feet up on the wall when I intended for the woman and child to be around 25 feet tall. Because scale is like such a huge important part of my work, and the way an image impacts, the scale really has a lot to do with that. Um, and I wanted the woman and child to feel like super larger than life and like very like glorified because it's this idea of this you know everyday moment of sacrifice that um, caregivers do all the time taking one of those little moments and then just like blowing it up where it's so in your face you know that these little acts of taking care of children are happening all over our city all over this neighborhood and nobody is seeing them because it's 2 a.m. and it's a mom with a lamp holding her child. Nobody sees that, you know? Um, I wanted to like, I went, that scale was super important to me. So in the third revision, we realized that the scale was gonna have to really change in order for the image to work on that wall. And at that point, I just said, I don't wanna do it. Like, I just don't, it's not gonna be the same. 
if she's only 15 feet high, it's not going to be the same. And so luckily I was working with a really great business owner um, at Curtis Creative, Stephen Curtis, and he agreed with me that scale was really important for that piece. So we decided to just completely turn you know, that project and on his building on his head and look at the other side of his wall, which is the one facing Shelby Street, where the traffic is actually seeing the piece as it goes by, and try to figure out how to get up on top of this little house next door to the building and do a piece um, that's from Street View that's higher up and then save this idea of the mother and child for another wall. Um, and the organizer for, the, for that festival um, was super passionate about that piece, finding another wall, and so she kind of started working on that. And so we kind of backburnered it, which this is one thing I'll say about the creative process, like where I'm at now, I'm learning to be okay with backburnering things and like putting them aside because things sometimes just have to ruminate. Life has to happen and then it'll come back around when it needs to and then you can pull it back out. So that's sort of what we did. So as I started redesigning this uh, wall for Curtis Creative with the quilting patterns, I started trying to think about how to add another element into it to tie it in with the woman and child mural. And I went back to some of my original research that I had done on that project and an image that had kind of haunted me that I kept coming back to. It was an image that I had found of a probably six or seven year old girl in a um, sewing circle from the 1920s um, in the Smoketown neighborhood. Um, and something about her hands in that image I got really fascinated with because it was just this idea of like, first of all, a six year old girl in a sewing circle, that sort of blew my mind. Um, but also just hands are an act and it's about, it's about doing and moving and creating something. And I wanted to really drive home the idea that Smoketown is this creative, desert, diverse neighborhood that has built this, that has like physically hand on created this place. And so that's where the idea of, of doing hands um, sewing the quilt together at the top came in and I wanted to leave the natural brick exposed on that piece because if you look closely at the finished painting if you look behind the hands there's actually a really awesome remnants of some signage that was there that, I mean it had to be like from the 50s um, where someone had had some you know just some signage up there at some point and it was all chippy and mostly brick but you know you could still kind of see the image behind it and the idea of covering up that historic signage was like really bothering me <laughs> we had permission to do it everything had gone through the through the right channels um, but it was personally bothering me to cover up something that had that much history like on historic brick in in a historical neighborhood like that so I wanted to leave as much of that as possible so behind the hands you can still see a lot of that old signage that's visible, which I love that in itself of this being like a, you know, a juxtaposition of like old and new. So that's kind of how that piece came to be. And um, for both of the projects, as we ended up at the other wall, um, it became a, a ton of work and I ended up um, employing some help. So I'll talk about that in a minute, but back to the woman and child image that's just sitting on my computer in a file waiting. Um, I got a call from the organizer for the festival and she said that she was able to get a wall and the funny thing is it was actually the wall that I had driven by probably seven or eight times and was fascinated with because it has this super awesome little diamond shaped window in the middle of it and it's right at the corner of Shelby and Brackenridge so it's a very um, populated corner. There's a little store right there that the neighborhood utilizes all the time. So it was like a very heavy traffic area for both walking and driving. And it was, it was like a dream wall. You know, it's like, I called it the Hail Mary wall, <laughs> which is kind of like a play on the fact that um, the woman and child image, she kind of has this halo around her. So I, I called it the Hail Mary wall because it came up very last minute and everything just fell into place to get that image up like literally weeks before the festival started. Um, and the owner of that wall, once he saw the image, he was really, really excited about it and 100% um, got behind me. We got the wall prepped 
within like with record time and we started working on that wall at the same time as um, as the other one during the festival this is the fall of 2019 and um, you know I was going back and forth between the two walls I tried to start them both at the same time and the group um, often seen rarely spoken which is another group of muralists here in town I employed them to help me because when you're working on large walls and you're getting imagery up it physically takes a team to do that and for this festival they were already working on some other pieces in the neighborhood and so we came up with a deal where they would help me get get, get the image up and then I wanted to do the rest of the work you know myself so these guys, you know, they travel all over the U.S. doing this kind of stuff, and they helped me get um, get the outline up. We used a large-scale projector that they provided to get the image up on the wall, and then, um, you know, we had some technical difficulties with equipment and everything. But within two days, we had all of the outlines drawn, and I was ready to start um, adding some color. And so that process of um, projecting the image, doing a uh, priming coat, they call that buffing the wall and getting like the outline done. It's sort of like on paper it would be called a sketch. You know, you get your sketch up and then from there I started blocking in like the big areas of color. So the first color I think I blocked in was the yellow orb around the mom's head because I knew that you would see it from a million miles away and it was just like yellow. I have, the, I have a very emotional relationship with the color yellow and I wanted that like huge pop of yellow there as soon as I could get it up. So that was really fun uh, to get started on and operating a boom lift is an adventure that I really enjoyed <laughs> and it kind of makes me want to go even bigger because it was way more fun than I thought it would be. Um, but one of the most memorable parts of like actually completing those murals is how the neighborhood started embracing those pieces even as they were being constructed. I mean they did like they didn't look great at first you know and all it was was a sketch and I was blocking in colors one at a time and then going back and layering color on top and uh, and it's a it's a um, as an artist it can be it's hard to show work that's not finished and, and on the street you know people see it at every stage every mistake I made it's like right there on the street you know for people to kind of visualize and ask questions about um, but the neighborhood was so incredibly kind and they immediately fell in love with the pieces and what's nice about the way that festival went was I had a lot of confidence in the imagery because it had been chosen through the process of committees and neighborhood meetings and at one point they even put up like 50 images of sketches by different artists and the community got to go and vote on their favorite piece and I was told later on that the image of the woman and child was the like most voted piece which kind of surprised me but then also I love it so you know that's one of the things that I'm trying to do as an artist is make sure that if I love it, that people can kind of, you know, connect to that too most of the time. So I felt really confident in that respect because it was relatable to a lot of people and it was already loved before it went onto the wall, even though we didn't have a wall for it. Um, once it found a wall, you know, it was immediately a piece that was um, loved and appreciated. And um, a lot of people would come by and honk as I was working on it or just give me words of affirmation that they really enjoy what I was doing. And, and that to me is like the best gratification is knowing that I'm not putting something up that would be an eyesore or you know that the neighborhood wouldn't appreciate but that it was something that they felt like was giving them a voice. So that was really important to me. So one other thing I wanted to just briefly like tell you about is this interactive element that came about on the wall with the woman and the child. Once we moved to that wall, um, I was really excited to have lots of space. And in talking with the owner, uh, Ben Carter, who is a lawyer, we came up with this idea of having a little interactive element where people could take photography you know, with the wall or somehow interact. And, and that was important to him. He's a very like vocal, um, advocate of that community and he wanted there to be that interactive portion which I love doing interactive pieces too so I was definitely on board so we just sort of like post it to our social medias um, you know what would you all like to see there if we were gonna put a quote what what might we put and the response was really overwhelming we got like way more ideas than we could even really process 
Um, but the one that we ended up narrowing it down to that sort of hit home with both of us and then also with the festival was a Wendell Berry quote, and it was just, what we need is here. And I was really drawn to it because, you know, the word here really like grounds you and um, puts you in a sense of place, which is, had a lot to do with what that mural was trying to do. And then also what we need is here. I felt like it spoke to the insecurities and the anxieties of parenting and, you know, how a lot of times we doubt ourselves and our abilities to like care for our children. Um, but it's also just a good reminder that like we have we have that ability and we are what we would need to be for you know as a caregiver. So I, I liked the duality of that quote, and then also Wendell Berry is just you know um, a well-known local artist or um, a poet as well or a writer. So we thought that that quote kind of hit on a lot of different levels, and I decided to create a little mini orb, um, the same sort of shape as the woman so when you stand in front of it you're sort of emulating the mural um, and you're you're sort of creating your own little orb of like you know I'm important and what I'm doing is important as well and so my favorite pictures have been of families in front of that wall especially families with like young children I've even had um, women you know involved in the uh, breastfeeding movement go there and demonstrate that in front of the mural, which has been cool too. But more importantly, it's, it's a place for the entire community to feel like they have um, ownership and that they can connect to the piece in that way. And the very first person to take a picture of it was a lady named Barbara who lived down the street. And, um, and she embodied the message of that mural entirely. So um, overall, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the background of that piece. It was one of the most enjoyable projects for me. And there's a lot of people that I would need to thank in order to make that you know, appropriate. But I'm going to just cut it short and uh, specifically mention Fund for the Arts, who was the major sponsor for that mural, and then uh, Metro Government as well. So it was a really enjoyable project, and I hope you enjoyed learning about it. Thanks.